Hello Internet Machine Dana, I hope you're doing really really well, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be going into a lot of detail all about scene and source nesting. It's quite possible that you've not heard of scene and source nesting and don't worry if you haven't, but you really need to know about this. It's very important with streaming because it can improve the performance of your stream and there's two or three other really really key benefits which I will get into the detail of in this video. Scene and source nesting can make your life a hell of a lot easier from a streaming point of view, particularly if you're making regular changes. It also enables you to set up far more complicated scenes way more easier. So from most different perspectives, it makes a big difference to what you can actually achieve on your stream. Also, if you're using a broadcasting software that doesn't support the copying of sources in a clean manner, in other words, being able to use the same source twice independently of each other. For example, Streamlabs OBS and XSplit does not have plugins for those things. OBS Studio, in fact, does have a plugin through StreamFX called Source Mirror. It allows you to basically achieve the exact same thing thing with relative ease. Now I have done scene nesting within some of my other videos, but I've not actually talked much about it or explained exactly what it is or how to use it. So stay tuned for the whole video. You're going to need to see all of this and I'm sure you'll be coming away from this video with a lot more inspiration of how you can use nesting to leverage the different sources that you have available to you on your stream. If you do find it useful, please, please, please hit the like. It definitely helps me. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you'll get more content like this from me. Let's do this. So first of all, what even is scene nesting? Well, all it is, is using a scene with inside another scene. So all you're really doing is creating a source from a scene, and then you can use that many, many times. Just, just to put that another way, let's say you have a webcam just like this, okay? Now, if you make a change to this webcam, then you don't have the raw file of this webcam available to use in a different place. And you might want multiple versions of this webcam. For example, you might want a square version. You might want a circular version of it. You might want a version with shading on it. You might want a green screen version of the webcam. All those things are not always possible when you use the same source across multiple different scenes. And that's because the attributes of one source, for example, the filters and things like that, will copy over to every single scene that it's on. So how do you get around this? Well, first of all, you can add filters to a scene rather than a source. But secondly, just directly by creating a scene of the source, it creates a separate copy of it, leaving the original in tact. And don't worry, if you're not following this explanation, you're wondering what the hell is this guy talking about? I'm going to show you some scenarios where this is going to be really, really important and the penny will drop. But you do need to tune in. You do need to stay in tune to this. You do need to watch it all. I'm also going to run through probably two key examples of where this is really, really important. So let's just get into OBS Studio. And I just want to point out at this point, if you're watching this and you're thinking this is an OBS Studio tutorial, it's not. The things I will be showing you are actually going to be shown in Streamlabs OBS, but this applies to OBS Studio. X split to Streamlabs OBS, but it particularly applies to those situations where the streaming software does not support the copying of sources. So it's a real good workaround. Okay, so to start with, to demonstrate this, I'm in OBS Studio and I'm opening Streamlabs OBS. So my camera devices have taken authority by OBS Studio rather than Streamlabs OBS, but I, I've got a workaround for that. What I'm just going to do here to start with is I'm going to create a new scene. And just to indicate that this is a nested scene, so a scene that contains more than one sources that I'll then be using using again. I'm going to put two of these lines there. And that's just purely a visual indicator for me in the naming scheme. I'm going to call this live scene base assets. And what I'm looking to do in this scene is create one scene that I can place as a source in every single scene that I have that involves like the main assets that I want to use on my stream. Those things will include the game capture, the monitor capture, alert box, and a few other things like that that I know I'm going to be repeatedly using across multiple scenes. So here's the first most important reason why this is really important to use nested scenes. Because if I want to make a change to my base assets, all I have to do is make that change on one of the scenes and it will apply to every scene that I've included that scene as a source. I'll demonstrate it if you're not following that, but just think about how this works. If you've got one base set of assets that you used across multiple sources and scenes, if you make one change to the top, it will apply to all of those underneath it. So I'm going to add a display capture, which will capture everything on my primary monitor, ASUS 4K. I'm going to select my main monitor and I'm just going to resize this. I'll right click and I'll fit that to screen. So now that's perfectly the size of the screen. Next, I'm going to add another source. 
a game capture, which is essentially like an application based capture. And this will allow me, particularly if I've got a stream deck, to switch between those two. But you can also do it manually within the software. And again, this isn't just Streamlabs OBS, this could be any broadcasting software. Call this app capture here. So, why would you add both the game and display capture on the same scene? Well, bear in mind, this is the base asset. So, I'm trying to put as many of the sources that I think I'm going to need. What will happen is it will be pulled in as a single source from a scene at a later stage. So from a performance point of view, something may be switched on and off on that base asset, for example, using a stream deck or something like that, but it will only carry through whatever is being displayed. So it simplifies it within the software because it's nested. Next, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to copy my widget URL for my alert box, my cloud bot, which will mean my alerts come through regardless of whether I'm on app capture here or display capture. So this involves copying a browser source link. I've got another video all about how to set up alerts. So if you're interested in more detail on setting up alert box, check the link in the description and I'll leave it on a card above me as well. So I'm going to rename this alert box. So we now have our alerts here and I can just place this wherever I want on my live base assets. Again, remember, this is the base of what I want to have. And I'm going to center it on the horizontal. So it's in the middle top of my live scene. Now you'll notice at this point, we're not even looking at webcams or labels or anything like that. We're purely trying to build the basic assets that we want on the stream. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to add also a widget goal as well. This is just a subscriber goal, but it could be absolutely any other widget that you know you're going to want across multiple scenes. So I'm going to add a sub goal here. This is another browser source. And again, I'll link the video below for adding sub goals if you want to know more specifically about that. So we now have our sub goal here, but I'm not happy with the positioning of that. I'm going to just place this in the top right hand corner and let's just resize it a little bit to make it larger. So let's just say there are base assets. There's a load more stuff you could add like text to speech, audio visualizers, all kinds of different things like that. But we're talking here about stuff that you want to be consistent on whatever scene is your live and main scene, even if you've got different variants of that same scene. Now I'm going to set up another scene now, and this will become one of the actual scenes that we then come to use in our stream. So I'm going to call this one live and I'm going to put it left web cam. So this is a live scene which will contain multiple other scenes nested within it, but it then allows me to have my webcam on the left. And this is where nested scenes really comes into its own. So if you didn't already know, you can add a scene as a source. It's like matrix inception type stuff. So if I now click on scene here, I've got the option to select a specific scene and I'm going to add those base assets. So now I don't need to think about setting up all the other stuff. I know that my goal, my alerts, display and app capture are all already there in that one scene, even if I then set up multiple versions of it. Now all I need to do is set up another scene, which is my webcam folder and bring that in as a source as well. So to do that, I'm going to go on to the scenes again and I'm going to set up a new scene, which we're going to nest. So I'm going to put the the visual indicator in once again, just like that. And this will be the webcam scene base assets. So we're here with another blank scene that we're going to populate. So now because I'm in OBS and it's got authority over this camera here, I'm going to use this camera over here and we're just going to pretend it's a webcam for the purpose of demonstration. So I'll actually just crop this to be a little bit more like webcam sized, just as a visual representation. Well, let's say that's now our webcam. Now, if I wanted, I could add like a mask over this to change the shape, curve out the edges, make a circular cam or all kinds of other stuff in this particular scene. Now what I've also done is set up some labels here. And again, I'll link a video below and on the card above about how to set up stream labels and also like a webcam border animation. So here I've got all of the bits that I need specifically for my webcam. And I now will not need to configure all these little assets, these piddly little assets that are really fiddly to deal with. I won't need to configure them every single time because I'll just drag in the scene onto my main scenes that I'm using for my stream and I'll demonstrate that in a second. So what I've done here is I've just positioned the webcam behind the webcam border and the labels in front and I'm fairly happy with how that looks in its base format. Don't worry about the fact that it's all black and stuff here. That's not a problem for the time being. So these labels have only been configured once. The webcam's only been figured, configured once and the webcam border has been configured once. Now I'm going to go into my main scene with the left webcam which has already got the base assets in it including our goal here, including our alert box which will be in the middle and including the display and the game capture. And I'm going to add in another scene. So I am nesting in the base assets and I'm also nesting in the webcam assets into one scene. And I can manage those two things separately whenever I make changes to those. But my base scenes will always carry through those changes, whatever they are. So I'm going to add source here and I'm going to add the webcam scene base assets into it. And now this is one source. I don't need to fiddle around with all the different components to this. I can resize it, make it bigger. I can change it and I can even by holding out 
cropping this edge here so that it's just the right size there. I'm cropping this edge here. Now I can place this on the left and I'm fairly happy as a basic streaming scene that that will work. But as you can see, I've only got two different sources in this scene, but they are scenes of their own because they're nested. So at this point, I just want to take a bit of a breather and understand exactly what we've achieved there. We've created two separate scenes which will manage specific tasks. One is managing the main scenes and components of your actual content and the other one is managing your webcam but they're managing them independently and then once they've been defined and tweaked to perfection then they're pulled into one scene and nested. So straight away the benefit we've got from doing that is that we only have to make one change to let's say the webcam for example if we're adding a LUT filter to it to improve the filtering and the coloring of that webcam border we only have to make a change to one even if we've got multiple scenes where we're using that webcam. So it massively increases the productivity because you're able to make one change which will reflect potentially over 5, 10, 15 different scenes that you might use where you're using that webcam. But the second is also a performance thing as well. Because all of those things have been defined as individual sources in the background, it's being pulled in as one single scene as a source to your main live scene. So that means the performance of that particular one source, it acts as one source rather than five or six multiple sources because it's done all the work in the background. So there's straight away a performance and an efficiency kick from that, but that's not it. There's more to this than just performance and efficiency. So just to demonstrate how easy it is now to manipulate these sources, I'm going to right click this and click duplicate. So this will duplicate and I'm going to call this one instead of left, I'm going to call it right webcam. So it's a completely new scene, but it contains the exact same sources within it. But instead on the right hand webcam, I want to select the webcam scene and I'm just going to move it all the way over to the right. Actually, what I'll do is, is I'll just right click here, click transform and edit the transformation. I want the height here of 411 to remain the same, but it's the X axis that I want to change here. So, so I need to remember that number 411, click done, drag this over here to about there, right click, transform, edit transform, and we go to 411 there and it places it at the exact same width. So now what I've got is two different scenes using the exact same assets. They're just slightly changed in terms of the position and I can switch between those if I don't want the content to be interfered by my webcam. Now I'm going to link another video that I've done all about scene transitions because that makes this process of changing between two scenes a lot more swishy and professional looking but that literally took me like a minute to make another scene we can make another version of that just to demonstrate right click duplicate we're going to call this middle Click done on that. Drag it between the two. So we've got left, middle, and right. And now on the middle one, I'm going to grab grab the webcam. I'm going to right click to transform it. Center on horizontal here. And I'm just going to now drag this to the very bottom. There you go. That took me 20 seconds to get another scene set up with a middle webcam because it's using all the same base assets nested within the new scene. So now I can switch between left, middle, and right really, really easily without interfering. And we've got our webcam unchanged. But if we now want to make a change to this webcam, say for example, if we wanted to round off these corners, or something like that, we can nip into the webcam scene base assets folder here and we can make the changes in the base folder, which will then reflect on both the left, the middle and the right. Hopefully you're following this so far and hopefully it makes really, really good sense. There's a little bit more complexity to this and this is when it really starts to get powerful, particularly for Streamlabs OBS and also for XSplit and OBS.Live users where there is no possibility to install a plugin like with OBS Studio called Source Mirror. It allows you to duplicate sources and make changes changes to them without affecting the original one. And this is a really powerful tool to use only as a result of being able to nest scenes. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. Again, it's a nested scene. So I want the visual indicator just to show that it's a nested scene for me. I'm going to call this the base cam raw 16 by nine ratio. So this is going to contain just the raw webcam so that I can use a changed version of that in another scene. Now what I'm going to do inside this webcam folder here, instead of using the webcam video capture as a source, I'm actually going to delete this and I'm going to use the webcam base raw. Now, bear in mind when I make this change, it will pull through to all of those three other scenes. But instead of adding it as a source directly by selecting the video capture device, I'm going to select scene instead, and I'm going to select the base camera raw. So think about what's happening here. I'm not actually bringing in a video asset. I'm bringing in a scene which contains a video asset. And that's very different. It's important to make that distinction. So I'm going to add that source here. Now within the raw webcam folder scene again, I need to add the actual video video itself. So the video capture device, add source. Let's just call this Sony Cam Raw. We'll add source here. Now in this case, because it is the raw footage, I am going to right click, transform this, and I'm going to fit this to screen because as the raw format, I want as much detailed information as possible 
because I know I can make changes in a separate scene if I need to. So I only want this asset in this. And now within the webcam scene here, I can make changes to this, which is pulled in that scene. And I can make it the same size as this. I can place it at the bottom underneath the webcam border. Let me just resize this ever so slightly so it's within the border and looks a little bit cleaner. So we've essentially got the exact same webcam situation. And as we can see, it's pulled through here, here and here. The difference is this source here is not the webcam source. It's a scene which contains the webcam source. So now if I want to, because I'm within a nested scene, I can crop that to fit the size of webcam that I really want it to be. Let's say there. So now I've cropped and changed that source, but because it's a scene as a source, I've only made the changes within this particular live scene. The base camera is still exactly as it was. The base camera remains completely unchanged. And again, it's pulled through that change of me being zoomed in through to those scenes because I've had this scene nested. So think about the logic of what we've got here. And for this, I'm going to use a very technological tool called Paint. We've got one scene, which is a base webcam. So that is like a base scene that contains the almost like the raw assets. We've then created another scene which nests the raw inside of another scene here with the labels. So I can make any changes in this scene without it affecting the original. So I've been able to add that to live scene one and also live scene two and three. So hopefully you're all following this and you see the benefits of doing this. Now think about the benefits of doing this. We've already mentioned the performance benefits and the time saving. If I want to make a tweak to the raw file, in other words, I just want the pixels on the raw webcam to be better. For example, I wanted to add a filter that applies to absolutely everything. I can go into the original file, which would be the base cam raw, this full file here, and make like a really overarching change. So it gives me that flexibility and that will roll down wherever this is used in terms of the raw file. But if I want to make a specific change to the way that my webcam and the labels looks rather than the raw, I can go to this mid tier nested scene here, which contains the webcam and the labels, make changes here without it affecting the raw file here, but it will then roll down those changes to here, here, or here. For example, if I wanted to change the font of the labels or the webcam border, I could do that easily in here and it would roll through here, but it wouldn't affect the original base raw source of the video file. Finally, at any point, I can make a change in the fully nested scene at the very bottom level of the hierarchy. So live scene one, two, or three in terms of like raw positioning of certain assets. So for example, on my left webcam, if I decide that this webcam isn't placed right without me having to grab all of these different elements because this is just one scene of its own, I can just make a change, move this in the place like that and nothing else is affected. It's not affected this scene, this scene. It's not affected the mid-tier assets here and it's definitely not affected my raw video assets for my webcam file. So hopefully you've taken some inspiration from some of those things. I now just wanted to briefly talk about some further benefits of doing this, okay? Now, really the objective of what I'm about to do now is to give you some ideas on how you can implement what I've just shown you. If you want to make color changes to your webcam on some scenes, but not the other, you can create two versions and have colors on one version and not on the other by dragging in the scene for the webcam and make the changes on there. And that's because the source you can add a filter to, you don't have to add it to the original scene. Another example of how I use this is when I use my green screen, I can use the same camera source, so this camera here, but on some scenes I can have a green screen scene which chroma keys out the green screen when I pull the screen down, but I don't have to do anything by changing this camera. I don't have to invest in a second camera. I can use the exact same assets, just use them in a different way. All I've done is chroma keyed out a source that's been dragged from a scene. What I will say is if you've got any questions about this, feel free to jump into my Discord. I'd be happy to try and help and diagnose. Lots of people use scene nesting, but so many people don't use it and it's incredibly helpful. The moment I started using these, I was able to do far more complicated things on my stream than I would otherwise have been able to do. So that was scene and source nesting. Hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you know a lot more about what that means and why it's needed. Once again, if you found it useful, hit the like button and don't forget to have a great day. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.